Hello, I am Tamara and today we are going to be learning four easy ways that you can sew curtains. I am going to have step-by-step -step instructions for you in this video and I also have a blog post and in that blog post are all of the written instructions so that you can follow along later on. If you end up thinking that all four of these curtain tutorials are too much for you, I do have a bonus option at the very end of this tutorial. It is really simple and I will explain that to you at the very end, so stick around. The four curtains that we are going to be sewing in this tutorial are going to be number one, a rod pocket curtain. Number two is a back tab curtain. Number three is a tab top curtain. And number four is a tab top curtain but with ties. Now quickly for a little bit of curtain math, you need to know how wide and how tall you want your curtain to be. Then for the side seams, you will add four inches to that measurement. For the bottom, you're going to add eight inches for that bottom hem. And then for the top of your curtain, that will be adjusted depending on the curtain that you choose to sew. So I'll explain those measurements throughout this tutorial. But before we actually sew any of these four curtains, I'm going to walk you through how we do the sides of our curtains because that is the same for all four curtains. So let's jump on in to learning how to do those side hems. Before jumping into the side seams, make sure that your fabric has been pre-washed, it has been pressed, and then you will cut the sides of your fabric and the top of your fabric so that it is nice and square. Then for your side seams, you will fold them in at one inch. I like to use my measuring gauge to check on this to make sure it's one inch all the way along. I will link to this measuring gauge in the description down below. And then you will press it and you will fold Fold it in that one more inch once again and give it another press. Then sew a quarter inch seam allowance along that inner edge. Remember to start and stop with a back stitch. You'll do that on both sides of your curtain. All right, so we've sewn our side seams and now it's time to learn how to do that bottom hem. That bottom hem is actually going to be the last step in your entire curtain process, but I think it's important for you to know how to do it before you choose which of the four curtains you're going to sew. So we have given ourselves eight inches of fabric to do our bottom hem. However, when you are doing your hem, you will hang your curtain up first and then mark where you want your curtain to end because sometimes we might make some mistakes on the top end of our curtain and it might change our measurements on the bottom. So I've folded my bottom hem up four inches and then I'm going to press that in place. I'm using my sewing gauge to make sure that it's four inches across the entire bottom and then you'll fold it up another four inches, give it a press, pin it in place, and then you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam around that bottom hem, starting on the bottom corner. Start with a back stitch, of course. Go up, pivot, go across, pivot again, and go back down, ending with another back stitch. And of course, like I said, you'll adjust that hem fold if you need your curtain shorter or longer. Option number one is this rod pocket curtain here. I actually made this curtain for the curtains in my sewing room and I chose to do the option with this ruffle on top. But if you don't want to do that ruffle on the top, that's totally fine. You can omit this top seam and then your rod will end up sitting in the top of your rod pocket there. So those are your two options. Let's jump on into this tutorial. The beginning of the rod pocket process is actually the same way that you would make the bottom hem. So you will fold the top edge down four inches, give it a press, and then you will fold it over four inches more, pressing it again and then pinning it in place. And you will sew a quarter inch seam allowance 
just along that bottom inner edge. So you'll start and stop with a back stitch. And at this point, you can be done your rod pocket. Or if you want to add that top ruffle, then you will measure down from the top edge an inch and a half. And then what you can do is you can draw a line using a water soluble marking pen, which I will have those linked in the description down below for you. And then you will sew once again, starting and stopping with the back stitch across that marked line. And then your rod will be able to go through that bottom loop and you have created a really adorable top ruffle. And this is what your rod pocket panel will look like once you've sewn those seams. Now this is option two. This is the curtain that will have a back tab. Again, this curtain can be done two ways. So in this tutorial, I'm showing you how to do it with the back tab right to the top of our curtain. But if you want to have a little bit of extra on top so it pokes above this rod, I will walk you through that process as well. So those are the two options for our back tab curtain. I recently made this particular curtain for my front hall windows and I just love how it turned out. We are going to start by making our back tabs. You will cut your tabs at six inches high by four and a half inches wide. Then you will fold your tabs in half right sides together and then sew a half inch seam allowance from the top to the bottom. When I sewed my tabs I actually chain stitched them so I did not back stitch when I started and stopped but it just made it easier to throw all of these tabs through the sewing machine all in one go. Then you will want to give that tube a press so that your seam is now pressed open and it is facing towards the back of your tube. Then turn this little tube right side out and give it one more press so it's nice and flat. Now to finish the tabs, you'll actually fold the top and bottom edges in at one inch and give them a press. Then just put your tabs to the side. Now to make the back tabs where the tabs sit in line with that top edge, you will fold your fabric down four inches, give it a press, and then you will fold it down four more inches. Then it is up to you to figure out where your tabs belong on the back of your curtain. You will want about five to six inches of space between each tab. Then tuck the bottom of the tab up underneath that bottom fold and then fold it up and pin it in place. You'll fold it up along that one inch crease we pressed into our tab earlier. And then you will fold that top edge down as well again at that one inch crease and you will pin the top of your tab in place as well. Then sew around the entire top section of your curtain using a quarter inch seam allowance and start and stop with a back stitch. You will go along the bottom, then you will pivot and go up, then you will pivot again and go across the entire top, pivoting, going down, and then meeting where you started. And this is what the back of your tab curtain will look like once you've installed those tabs. Now, if you want to add that little bit of extra to the top of your fabric, you will actually add two inches to your measurement fold, and then you will fold it. So you'll give it a five inch fold and then another five inch fold and then you will be able to add your tabs and that will naturally give you one inch extra of fabric above your tabs. Pin those tabs in place the same way that I explained in the first version and then the big difference here is that you are going to sew that quarter inch seam allowance along the bottom edge, pivot and go up but then you are going to actually have to sew across the top edge giving yourself about an inch and a quarter inch worth of seam allowance to go along that top edge. I hope you guys are enjoying these tutorials so far. If you are, I would just like to ask you to please hit that subscribe button so you don't lose me on YouTube. And if you could hit that thumbs up button, I'd greatly appreciate that because that will help YouTube know that this is a good sewing tutorial and then it will share it with other people.
All right, let's get back to this tutorial. Option number three is this tab top curtain. Now this particular curtain is very similar to the number four style curtain that I will show you next. And the reason why I say they're similar is because of how they're made. So the back of the curtain has this little section of fabric here that you will need to cut and add so that you can attach your top tab. Start by cutting your tabs at nine inches high by five inches wide. Then you will fold them right sides together and you will sew a half inch seam allowance along that edge. Once again, you can do this doing the chain stitching method I showed you in the last version. And then of course you'll need to turn these tubes right side out and then press them flat. If you find it difficult to turn these tubes right side out, I have a great turning tool that I recommend and I will have that linked in the description down below. Now to add the tabs to the top of your curtain, you are going to lay them so that they're folded in half and the raw edge of your tab is lined up with the top raw edge of your curtain. Make sure that you are laying it on the right side of your curtain fabric with the wrong side face down. Then, of course, same thing, you are going to have to figure out the measurements to space your tabs evenly across that top edge. Make sure to leave yourself between five to six inches of space in between these tabs. Then, sew a quarter inch seam allowance across that top edge starting and stopping with a back stitch. Next, you will need to prepare a thinner piece of fabric cut out of the same fabric as your curtain panel. Cut it three inches high and then two inches wider than your finished curtain panel. So for myself, I actually cut this strip before I hemmed my curtains. So I'm just measuring here and cutting two inches longer than my finished curtain panel. You need to do this because next, you are going to press both of those short ends in at a full inch press. Then fold one of the long edges up at a half inch seam allowance and press that in place. I like to use my sewing gauge for this. Once again, that is linked in the description down below. Now that your narrow piece of fabric has been prepared properly, you will lay it right side face down with the raw edge along the top of your curtain and you will pin that in place. Then sew along that top edge with a half inch seam allowance, starting and stopping with a back stitch. Once you've sewn that top seam, then just press your tabs so that they are laying nicely upwards from that curtain. So I just press that raw edge down and then fold that three inch piece of fabric down and press again. Then pin in place and sew a quarter inch seam allowance starting on the top edge. Of course, you start with a back stitch and you end with a back stitch and you'll go down and pivot across, pivot and back up. And this is what the top tab curtain will look like once finished. And this is option number four. It is a curtain with tab tops that tie. The nice thing about these tied tops is that you can adjust the height. So if you're not very confident in your hems, this might be a nice option for you. But to do these ties, you don't want to use thick fabric. So I recommend a lighter linen fabric to be able to sew your ties, or you could even opt for a ribbon or a twill or a rope if you don't want to make your own ties. And that might be an option as well for you, especially if you're using thicker fabric, because the thicker the fabric, the harder it is going to be to sew these ties. To make your ties, you will cut your strips of fabric at two and a half inches high by 21 inches in length. You will need two ties for each tab. Then to make your ties, take your fabric and fold it wrong sides together and give it a press so that it's nicely folded in half. Then on one short end, you will fold it in at a half inch and press that inwards as well. Then for the two long edges of your tie, you will need to fold those edges in towards that center crease press that in place and then pin your tie so that it's all held together. I like to use these magic clips, which I will have linked in the description down below if you're interested. And you will sew a eighth of an inch seam allowance along that folded edge. You will start 
on the raw edge side of your tie and you will go towards the folded edge, then pivot and sew along that folded edge, finishing your tie. Now I find that my sewing machine can sometimes have a hard time getting started when I'm sewing these ties. So I love to use a sewing stiletto to keep my fingers safe, but also help my sewing machine move the fabric at the very start of the process. So I will also link to some good sewing stilettos in the description below as well if you're interested. So when your ties are finished, you will have one raw edge and then of course the long edge and one end will be neatly finished. Then lay your curtain panel so that the fabric is right side up. Grab two of your ties and match up those raw ends and then line them up with the raw end of your curtain panel and pin it in place. It is up to you to make sure that your ties are even evenly spaced. I don't recommend going past eight inches. So five to six inches of space between your ties is best. Pin those in place and then sew a quarter inch seam allowance along that top edge that will hold all of your ties in place nicely. Start and stop with a back stitch. Then you will need to prepare a thin strip of fabric out of the same fabric as your curtain panel and cut that three inches high by two inches longer than the width of your finished curtain panel. So for myself, I already have my finished curtain panel here, but I cut this strip of fabric before I finished and hemmed those two sides. So I'm just cutting away a little bit of that extra fabric. So I only have two extra inches of fabric to this strip. Then take it to your iron and press up a half inch. Use that sewing gauge to make sure that that entire edge is pressed the same all the way across and then fold in those two ends at a one inch on either side and press those in place as well. Now that your narrow piece of fabric has been prepared properly, you will lay it right side face down with the raw edge along the top of your curtain and you will pin that in place. Then sew along that top edge with a half inch seam allowance, starting and stopping with a back stitch. Next, press that top edge so that your ties are pushing that center hem down and you could fold that fabric down and give it another press, just really helping your curtain lay exactly where you want it. Pin it in place, then we will sew a quarter inch seam allowance starting on that top edge with a back stitch going down pivoting at the corner going all the way across and then pivoting and going back up ending with another back stitch and this is what your tied tab curtain panel will look like when that process is finished now, before we jump on in to that final bonus easy curtain, I want to ask you guys a simple question. If you could please leave me a comment in the description down below and let me know which of these four curtains you have decided to sew and perhaps where you're going to place them in your home. I would love to know. And if you guys have any adjustments that you're making to these curtains, leave those in the comments as well as others may appreciate your adjustments. This is the grand reveal for that bonus curtain idea I had for you. This is the easiest curtain you are going to make. But before I show it to you, I just want to ask if you'll hit that subscribe button so that you don't lose me on YouTube. And of course, hit that thumbs up button if you found that this tutorial was helpful, because that will help YouTube know to share this video with other people. All right, no more delays. This is it. You're going to find these rings with these little clips on the bottom and I will have those rings linked in the description down below. And these rings will make it so that you don't have to hem your curtain because you can fold the curtain top so that it is the length that you want. You can use a scrap piece of fabric like what I've done here. So I've got a raw edge here on this fold and even my sides are a raw edge and the bottoms. Let me show you. These bottoms are even a raw edge. So if you're into that look, then this is a no sew project for you. Another way to make this a no sew project is to buy painter's drop cloth fabric at your hardware store. They are often already pre-hemmed, so you'll be able to do this look easily with those as well. I've seen it done, it looks really nice. And of course the final option is you buy the fabric that you want 
and you just do the simple side seams that I taught you earlier in this tutorial and you can do that same method for this fold here and then just hem them the way that I taught you how to hem curtains earlier in this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed this sewing tutorial. Please share it with your friends if you found it helpful and I will see you guys next time. Bye for now!